everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with a very, very special painting tutorial. We are painting Gardas, Steel Soul, pious and pure hearted Lord Celestant of the Hallowed Knights. He is an absolute weapon. And this model is fantastic. It's just ridiculous. I love it so much. I can't tell you how excited I am to paint him. He is my favourite character in all of Age of Sigma, close to being favourite character in all of Warhammer. I just adore him. I adore him so much. And here he is rendered in plastic. So, I'm going to stop waxing lyrical about Gardas and we're going to start painting him. He's been primed with grey here, and the first colour we're going to be using is Grey Knight Steel. And we're going to be using this on all of his armour. So I've got some thin down here on my palette, and I'm just going to start painting it all over the silver armour of the Hallowed Knights. Just like this. Now it might take a couple of a couple of coats, because Grey Knight Steel, whilst it is a base paint, is very bright and it is going over a very light undercoat. So give it two thin coats if you need to. And don't worry if you get it on areas that aren't going to be silver. The majority of the Hallowed Knights colour scheme is metallic. For example, all that trim is gold. But if you do get it somewhere where you don't want it, i.e. on the cloak or on the shoulder pad or even on the tabard down there, you just need to knit back up with some grace here. And so with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take some thinned down rune fang steel and we want to use this over the top of our flat areas on our armour panels. So for example, just here, we want to get this layered all over like this, just avoiding those recesses. So that the Grey Knight Steel is providing our bluish hue. And the Rune Fang is providing the brightness, just like that. And so with that done, you should now have this beautiful, very shiny armour, as you can see underneath all of my lights. It's very glimmery. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of a blue tint to all of this now. And the colour we're going to make is a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part talisar blue. We just want this to be really, really, really thin. So you'll see here on my hand, you see that kind of, that kind of tone. And we want to use this all over the top. Of our armour. So with that done, what we're now going to do is going to once again use Rune Fang Steel. Only this time, I'm going to apply this to the flats of the panels, just avoiding the recesses entirely where that blue is settled. So this is kind of almost like a really wide edge highlight. As you can see there on that foot, just like that. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to highlight our armour using some Stormhose Silver. And 
And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some black Templar. We're going to use this to paint in the soft joints in his armour, as well as his belt. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Retributor armour. We're going to use this to paint in all of his gold details. You might be thinking, hey, Mr. Warhipster, why haven't you done his weapons or those hammers on his cloak or even the spikes on his armour up here? Well, they are silver, yes, but they're going to be a different coloured silver to the armour that we've done. We don't want it to all be the same colour because it looks a bit weird otherwise. But we are going to do that slightly differently. So for now, we're just focusing on getting all of his armor done. You can use this Retributor armor on the gold details on his weapons now if you want to, but you don't have to because we're gonna, we're gonna do it later. The gold is the same recipe, regardless of what detail you're painting. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna make a roughly two parts contrast medium, two parts fire slayer flesh to one part Shayish purple mix to give us this really lovely dark shading that we're now going to put all over the top of our gold details. And you just want to be careful with how much you've got on your brush as you do this. If it doesn't look thin enough, just add more medium. Sometimes you might have to go as far as like three or four parts medium. I feel like I've got a good balance here with the two. Two parts. You just want to use smaller amounts than you would normally. So just kind of use the tip of your brush to guide this mix all over your gold details. And so with that done, you should now have some beautifully shaded gold. So what we're going to do is we're going to layer it up and make it nice and bright. And the colour that we're going to be using first is Skull Crusher Brass. And this is just a really lovely yellowy, brassy gold type colour. And it just looks gorgeous. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start picking out all of our details. Just like this. Just avoiding where that shade has settled. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to make a roughly two part Stormhouse Silver to one part Retributor Armour mix. And we're going to use this as our edge highlight on all of our gold. And with that done, you should now have beautifully shiny silver and gold armor. All that's left to do is to take a tiny amount of Stormhose silver and use this to just pick out areas like the little rivets. And also to provide a little bit of a spot highlight. like that. And so with that done, well, he looks pretty awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on and we're going to paint the blue details. Now these are going to include the front facing, or in this case the outside of the cape, because this is technically the inside. This is going to include the central area of the tabard down there, and it's also going to include his shoulder pad. Now the colour we're going to be using first for this is Talisar Blue. This is going to act as our pre-shade because we want a nice deep blue here.
And so with that done, what we now want to do is take some Ultramarines Blue. And we want to apply this over the top. Just like so. And so with that done, just before we do the rest of the highlights on those cloaks, what we are gonna do is we're gonna paint the other side, so the reverse just here and down here as well. And the color we're gonna make is a roughly two parts of a lupus pink to one part shyish purple with a bit of contrast medium in there just to improve the flow. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this mix, we're just gonna paint it all over. This just gives us this really lovely, deep, vibrant purple. Purplish pink, I should say. that done just before we do any highlights to that we're going to continue on with the rest of the base coats and then we'll go back and we'll finish all of the rest of the highlights and things off in one big highlighting party so the color that we're going to use whilst we've got it is for lupus pink we're going to use this for all the soft grips on his weapons so we've got one on the hammer and one on the sword And with that done, we're then going to take some Skeleton Horde. I'm going to use this to paint the parchment. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down iron hand steel. I'm going to use this to paint in all the remaining silver details. It's going to be areas like his weapons. The hammer's on his cloak, and then the little kind of pins and things that are holding up the various lightning bolts that are dangling from his armor, as well as areas like the spikes on his head, or like this area here. They're not spikes on his head, but they are decorative features. And next up, we're going to use some thinned down Retributor armor to paint in all of our remaining gold details. Here is like these details here on the hammer and on the sword. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Apothecary White and we're going to use this on all of our white details. This includes this lightning emblem here. Like that. This also includes his hair. As well as the lightning bolts. hanging around his armor and the lightning bolts and the halo on his shoulder pad. And with that done, what we're then gonna do is take some Gilliman flesh and paint this on his face. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to shade all of those iron hand steel details that we painted in. The color we're going to make is a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part black templar. 
And what else do we want to do? You just want to take, you don't want to use too much of this. It's very runny. You just want to very gently shade this on all of that. Iron hand steel, just like that. Now the reason we don't use null oil in this situation is that the Black Templar, even though it's really been shaded down, it gives us a lot more of a high contrast. It still retains more of the base color than null oil would. You just want to be very careful that we don't overload any of these details. So just be very careful. Just use small amounts. Just like I'm doing here. And next up, we're going to once again make our roughly two parts contrast medium to two parts fire slayer flesh to one part shyish purple mix. I'm going to use that to shade our gold. And so with that done, all of our base coats are on, all of our shades are on, so it's time to make all of those details really pop. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some iron hand steel and we're going to use this on the weapons. However, what we've done is we've thinned it right down with lots and lots of water, like six or seven parts water, so that when it comes off the brush, it's just very, 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 very thin like that. And what we're going to do, we take this really thin iron hand steel and just on the flats of the weapons, which can return them to being as shine as we possibly can. So just here, for example, let's just gather up that loose bit of dust. And here on the hammer face as well. Just like that, so you'll see that there's a real, real shine to them. Add a little bit of it here as well. Just like that. Similarly on the sword, I'm just gonna brush the brush. Similarly on the sword, we've got the flat of the blade around all of that lettering. You can just add this iron hand steel-esque glaze back onto Just like that, so you see, it just becomes really shiny, which is lovely. And with that done, what we then want to do is we want to use some Stormhose Silver to pick out all of the edges. And with that done, what we're now going to do is move on to all the white details. Now, there's a couple of different things that we're going to be doing here. So first off, we're going to cover what's going on here on his, on his chest. So what we want to do is rather than doing an edge highlight here, we just want to layer up the flat area, just avoiding those lightning bolts and the recess there where that apothecary white has settled nicely. Just like that. But it really makes the recess nice and vibrant. Well, nice and shaded. What we also want to do is we want to take this Corax white and on the runes on his tabard, just want to very carefully fill them in with the Corax white. Just 
like that. What we also want to do, is just want to pick out all those lightning bolts as well. Like so. And the last thing we want to do is on the hammer, we want to draw some lightning. Coming down the face of the hammer. And just across this little front part here. Like that. So just take your time here. Oh, we also want to highlight the hair. <laughs> As I say, just take your time here. And then we'll come back. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Talisar blue mix. I'm gonna use this to add the energy on that hammer and on the sword. So what we do, we take our mix, we paint it over the top of our lightning. Like so. Similarly, on the sword blade, what we want to do is just around the runes. We just want to add this Talisar blue. Like that. You can of course build this effect up to be as bright as you like it. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Ushabti bone. We're going to use this to relayer and brighten up our parchment. I just want to avoid. All of that lettering. And with that done, what we then want to do is take some Screaming Skull and use this to highlight that parchment. And next up, we're going to use our two-part Stormhose Silver to one-part Retributor Armor Mix to highlight all of our gold. We don't need to worry about doing the Skull Crusher Brass stage because these details are so small. And with that done, we're now going to use some Alatoc Blue. This is to highlight all of our blue details. And with that done, what we're then going to do is going to take some Hoeth Blue. We're going to apply this as our spot highlight to all our blue details.
And next up, we're going to use some pink horror to add a little highlight to all our slightly darker pinky purple. And so with that done, all that's left to do is to work on his face. And the color that we're going to be using for that is Flayed One Flesh. What we want to do is just take small amounts of this on our brush, pick out all of the sharpest facial features. So this will be his nose, his brow, his cheekbones, his eyelids. And with that done, we're then going to take a tiny amount of Pallid Witch Flesh. I'm going to use this on the sharpest features. Just a little spot highlight. So like there on his nose. Just like that. And with that done, what we then want to do is take some Screaming Skull. I'm going to use this for his teeth. And for the whites of his eyes. And with that done, we then take a tiny, tiny dot of Black Templar. I'm going to place that in the middle of his eyes. And so with that done, what we then want to do is take a really small amount of Volupus Pink. We want to use this on his tongue. Just hiding in there away. And we want to use a tiny amount of this. A little bit less than that. On his bottom lip. And so with that done, Gardas is now finished. But what we are going to do is we're going to paint his base next. And the colour that we're going to be using first is Talisar Blue. And what we want to do is we just want to use it straight from the pot. And in amongst the stones, we basically want to place this Talisar Blue. Just like this. You don't need to do it in all of them. Just pick the ones that you want. Don't worry if it's not perfect. And with that done, what we then do is take some Basilicanum Grey. And we want to paint this over the top of the rocks and just avoiding where that Talisar Blue is really settled. In those recesses. It doesn't matter if you overlap a little bit. That's all part of the effect. And so with that done, you should have a base that looks somewhat like this. So what we're going to do now 
is we're going to take some blue horror. I'm going to just thin it down with tons of water. So it's like, basically like a, almost like a kind of, almost like a wash. And if you look on my hand, just at how watery that is. And what we do is we take that thin down blue horror. And we add it in amongst all of the Tarasol blue. Just like this. You can see because it's so thin. It's already doing the trick. It'll just run. into the recesses a little bit more. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to give all of those rocks a dry brush, quite a heavy dry brush of administratum gray. And then next up, we're going to give those rocks a very light dry brush of Praxetti White. And with that done, what we then do, take some astro granite debris and we use this in all that negative space. So with all that astro granite applied, what we're now going to do is going to take some space walls grey. We're going to use this to shade that astro granite debris. Let's just add a little bit of depth in there, but not too much. Just might be using space walls grey rather than something like basilicanum grey. And with that done, just to finish it off, we're going to, once again, use a small, very light dry brush of Ra Praxetti White, not Rack Right. And lastly, but by no means leastly, we're going to paint in the rim of the base using some Corvus Black. Who has been completed? Only the faithful. Yes, Gardas Steel Zolt is finished. And He's beautiful. 
He's a beautiful model, and I think I've done a really good job on this. The contrast paints are working at a hundred percent on this one. They're really doing a lot of a lot of the heavy lifting, particularly on all that silver armor and on that gold. This was so much fun to do. I love painting Hallowed Knights, and I love them. I love Stormcast. I love painting. I love making videos for all of you, but this one was a particularly special one for me. I've been waiting for a Gardas model for a long time. I have an old Lord Celestant model that I've been using as him, but this one is just everything I could have hoped for and more, and I love it. I hope you love it too. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you'd like to support me further, like these legends and bosses that you can see on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.